Hello, this is the second episode of Rocket Labs Devlog. We have two different topics today. First of all, we had an exhibition in Vision Team where we had a nice setup about uh, background projecting and robotics. The second topic will be this scene, how we are doing a bit of commercial take in our facility. We are at Vision Team's warehouse. We have a lot of new equipment and devices from those companies. We have a nice setup which shows what ignition motion control software is capable of. We have two nice robots here besides the Rocket. One is our new smaller robot arm compared to the Rocket. This is called Stinger. One what we got for testing from Kuka Hungary. While it's moving the camera, okay it's a DSLR camera but uh, we can attach some props and some objects what we can move around as it uh, moves the, the object. The bigger robot tracking the, the position of that, uh, that robot. Uh, Why we were programming this robot's movement, we just needed to define the positions, but not the rotations because it tracks the uh, smaller arms object because we have both in the same scene and we can use the position data for the tracking shot. At the LED wall, we can see a virtual reality projecting. This comes from Unreal Engine. While we move the stringer around, it updates the camera position data in Unreal on the fly. So it's not a pre-baked cached movement. We feed the position data from that robot into Unreal in real time. So this is Cinema 4D and we have here the two robots, the Stinger and the KUKA LBR IVA. First, we designed the LBR IVA's movement. We have the camera object here and we can attach this object to this target and afterwards the camera will track this object. So in this animation we only just designed the robot head's position but not the rotations because it's automatically tracking this, this object. For sure we can, we can set some offsets and extra superimposed animations on the top of this tracking shot, but it's rather nice to have synchronized all the, all the camera movements and the object uh, movements in space and time. Here we have the ignition software. This is the Rocket Labs development. What we have here is a node representing the robot uh, in Simo 40 the actual Stinger robots node and the Unreal Engine robots node. We have Fuka LBR IVA node which comes from Simo 40 and we feed the robot uh, with this data and we get back the data from the robot and we are feeding this data into Cinema 4D. So it's a two-way node. In order to demonstrate what we can do with two different robots in the same set, we pull together a sample scene where we pouring beer into a paint.
Let's go into the details. So we have the Kuka robotic arm here. When we start to tilt this bottle, we move the camera in front of the label of the beer to show the brand nicely. And when the liquid starts to fall into the pint, we rotate the pint around with the servo motor. And when the free falling starts, uh, we speed up the Stinger Cinema Robot, which moves the Phantom VO 4K camera to keep up with the end of the liquid falling into the pin. Why we are using the VO4K instead of the Flex4K is because the VO4K weighs much less and it's much smaller, so we can move with greater dynamics. And the only difference between the VO4K and the Flex4K is that the VO4K doesn't have the same cinema recorder, so we have to save the recordings via 10G Ethernet, so it takes a little longer to save the, the footage. But this isn't a bottleneck because when we're done with the recording, we need a lot of time to clean the paint, to get a new beer and make everything ready for the next take. This is KUKA's collaborative robot LBR IVA R820. 14. R820 means that maximum reach from the center of the base to the end of the robot, it's called flange. When all the axles are extended, the maximum distance is 820 millimeters from the center of the base to the flange. 14 means that it has maximum payload capability of 14 kilograms. So as I said, this is a collaborative robot, which means that it has advanced safety features, so any human can work uh, safely beside this robot. And it has nice uh, curves instead of sharp edges, which can cut your finger or break your limbs. So you can work beside this robot without worrying that you will get injured. Usually robotic arms have six joints, this has got seven. And why it is good for? Let's say you have a mobile phone, what you want to pick and place onto a shelf. But you have an upper shelf. A traditional robot could collide with the upper shelf. So this robot can do the very same thing that a human can do with its elbow, like turn it down like this, and uh, it will keep the phone with the same position in the same orientation. So you can put this onto the shelf without any problems. It has torque sensors on every each of axles, so if you have a task which needs to be done with a certain amount of pressure, like a part inserting into another part, or let's say polishing, this robot can do the job uh, with the same amount of force every time. Those are very nice features, but my favorite is that you can just simply drag the bottle and move it around with your hand. When you drag the bottle and you want to move from there to there, you're applying a force uh, to this object. Uh, the torque sensors are registering that force and uh, the robot's controller will move the motors to get this object from there to there. So it doesn't work like that, that it releases its motors, but it measures the torque sensors and it moves the motors accordingly to those measurements. So let's design a movement with the freehand controlling mode. To make our life easier, we developed an application in Unreal Engine. This application communicates with Ignition in real time with our fuel transport protocol. If you want to learn more uh, about the fuel transport protocol, the first episode of Devlog has some information about that. So you have a nice 3D view with its current position. You have controlling buttons here. So when I hit the manual control button, it activates the robot's manual controlling mode. So I can move the object around.
here we have another button. Uh, this is the record button. So when I hit the record button, it starts to record my movement. So I hit the record button, do the movement. Hit the record button again, disable the manual movement and we are done with the movement programming. What we can do with this recording, we can play it back from ignition or we can upload it to Maya, Cinema 4D or Blender or whatever 3D animation application. And uh, this is because if you want to alter just a little piece of the movement, but it's for smoothing out the curves of the movement because there is an object and when I move it, I have to force the robot arm as well, not just the object. So it's not like a perfect freehand move, but uh, it's a little rough, a little jitterish. So it's a good idea to smoothen it out. Actually, you don't need to upload anything. So we know that you want to avoid any run tripping as much as possible. So we designed the ignition that way that we can record that movement directly into the 3D animation application. In order to connect this KUKA robot, to ignition we need to have a gateway box. This is uh, what we have designed just for testing purposes. So it's not a complete design. Uh, you can see there is a huge gap for air ventilation. It's just a ugly black box, but uh, it's fully functional. Uh, we can connect the KUKA robot here. Uh, this is an Ethernet port. And afterwards we can connect ignition to the Ethercat port. We can connect the next device to here so we can have a chain of devices. Turntables, motion platforms, lighting equipment, servo motors, robots, cameras, video mixer consoles and so on. Shooting scene like that could be rather complex and uh, when we need a PC in this system for controlling or for a gateway, we always choose industrial computers from back of uh, automation because uh, they are rather solid, well-designed uh, products. In my opinion, those are the best industrial PCs. Uh, they also have a lot of input-output cards uh, for controlling valves, pumps and uh, measuring pressure, current measuring, switch on and off things, uh, controlling servo drives directly. And so they have a rather nice compatibility list with, with external devices. I've been in back of automation uh, factory in Germany, Ferl, and uh, I've seen by myself uh, how they are handling the, the manufacturing process. Their quality control raised the bar to the, to the highest level. I could promise this, those are top quality products. Thanks for watching the second episode of Racket Labs Devlog. If you want to learn more about our projects, hit the subscribe button. And if you have any questions, please ask it in the comment section below. Multiple studios, special effects, and state-of-the-art robotics. Operated by the best visual engineers. Rocket Lab Motion Control Budapest. Check out our website.